All right, so here we are. Uh, we are going to be going into geometric sequences and series, solving lots of fun problems. All right. Again, a sequence is separated by it's a list, whereas a series is added up. Okay, it's a one is a list. The other one is a number, or is. Or is eventually will be added up to become a number. All right, in a geometric the number goes step by step by step and is multiplied by a common ratio. In an arithmetic sequence, we saw a common difference, and we were adding that common difference. This time, we are multiplying by a common ratio. Started off with, say, So what am I doing to go from there? So if I ask you, is this a geometric sequence, okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to take successive terms and divide them in order to make sure that you really do geometric sequence. 75 divided by 15. Right? Term being not a geometric at that point. It's neither. Same. Right? Are we good? Here, in that one, if I'm going from 64 times what gives me 32? One half. I'm not dividing by two, applying by a half. And that's actually important. I, Dealing with that R value. Number and that in this case is a half. And again. So 64 times a half gives me 32. 32 times a half gives me 16. 16 times a half gives me 8, and we're happy. Okay? All right, fantastic. All right. So if we if you remember at some point in your notes we have today. Remember all that? Okay, and all we've current the top. Okay, and for those of you just checking out my YouTube channel for the very first time, I'm very sorry I did not record those lessons. So, all right, your neighbor's notes. All right, and then we're done with that. Okay, well, what we're going to do is you can keep your finger on that page or tag it. We're going to come back and we're going to fill in this slide. Okay. All right. So, if I wanted the nth term. All right, let's take a generic garden variety geometric sequence, see if we can come up with a form. So, let's start off with say, and now we have All things being normal, I will use D as to let you know that I'm dealing with a geometric sequence. Okay, IB sometimes uses U's and V's. Okay, but if there's, you just kind of have to keep your eye on it and make sure you know what you're dealing with. All right, but all right, so if I wanted the next term here, the fifth, multiplied by. Two, because you recognize that the common ratio between successive terms was two. You were multiplying by two every time. All right. R times R times R, and finally times R. Now, 
this to get that last term. The you're going to take 80, you're going to multiply it by 80, you're going to get 160, you're going to put it on that line, and you're going to be a happy person. But that's kind of a recursive process, you know, based upon the number before it. But what if we didn't have it, okay? Instead, if I asked you what the 700th term was, we would be really nice to be able to come up with, a, with an explicit formula rather than a recursive formula to be able to just throw in the number and have the right number pop out, okay? So let's see if we can come up with it based upon what we did. Process. Yeah. Four R's to get there, right? that term. Now, if you'll notice, to find the fifth term, we used four R's. We didn't need five R's because the first term doesn't need one, right? It's the number of, number of steps we take. I'm going to start off with the first term, and you're going to give me how many R's. If I wanted N, the nth term, n minus 1. If I wanted the 100th term, you're going to give me 99 r's, right? It is the that we need. Okay. So, back to your slide that you did a minute ago, and you're going to I like to do this in my notes. I like to have one slide that kind of is like the crystallization of all of the things that you need for this unit. Okay? All right. Now, to find the sum of the first hundred geometric terms, for example, it's not like we did it with an arithmetic. We, in a sense, folded that list onto itself. You know, took the last term and the first term, folded it over to make a bracket. Remember? Okay. Well, it doesn't quite work like that with this one because the the terms are getting much bigger as they go down the line. Okay, they get really big pretty fast. Okay, if R is greater. So what we have to do is do some pretty crazy fun little algebra. you can do to make this a little bit easier to play with is to rewrite G's 2, 3, and 4 in terms of things you already know. Okay, go back to, out to the arithmetic sequences. I said to you that A1 and D, if you knew A1 and D, then you knew the whole thing. You knew everything, right? Well, in this case, it's not A1 and D. It's G1 and, and R. So if we can rewrite G2, G3, G4, G whatever, in terms of G1 and R, then we're only dealing with, one, with two unknowns rather than a whole bunch of unknowns. Okay? So let's rewrite it. This would be... This is... It's going to be equal to something. I don't know what it is, but I'm just going to call it S sub Okay. Now, here's where neat. First of all, this process, that first step that I just did right there, that's always a good idea. Okay. It's not always the way to do it, but it's always a good idea to keep it in your mind as a met, as a as a way to kind of get started in a geometric series problem. Okay. It's a good first step. Now, here's a neat little trick. I 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of close my eyes to this. Mm. Oh, my smartboard is not playing playing nice today. Mm. Oh well, not going to work. Smartboard. We're just going to ignore it from above, uh, the above line, and we're only going to work with the next line, the second line. I'm going to multiply it by r. And that's going to make all of the exponents of all of my r's increment by 1 when I just get to the other side. Do this in every time you want to find the form. You want to find the sum. I'm just telling you where the formula comes from. At the end of this process, we will have a nice formula. Okay, but I hate giving you a formula. To say, hey, believe it. All right. Notice between these two lines, I have a lot of terms in common, don't I? Okay. So if I'm seeing, go ahead and say, you know what? I'm just going to get rid of all the stuff that I don't want. I'm going to subtract one line from the other. Apply it with this. All right. So, if I take the first line and I subtract the second line, the G1, is that going to survive? The pl this guy right here. Is he going to survive? Yes. But what about all of the other terms when I subtract the two equations? What's going to happen to them? They're going to cancel each other out. This guy is going to cancel with that guy, this guy with that guy, this guy with that guy. The last guy, right? Okay, that's kind of cool. I've taken what was initially a nasty thing, and now it's a lot simpler looking. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to factor out some GCDs. By itself with nothing else. So the left hand side I'm gonna and I'm gonna be left with what? Good. And this right hand side, I'm gonna factor out its GCD, which is a what? G1. And I'm gonna be left with 1 minus r to the fourth. And now getting s sub 4 alone, dividing by that pair. Parentheses, G1 is a formula for four terms. Now, let's expand that idea instead of just dealing with four terms in a geometric sequence. What if I wanted 100 terms? What would it look like? Right. So if I wanted a general form that didn't have to worry about, uh, you know, any, any number you wanted, what would I replace what with to get what? Right. The nth term would be the first term and that's your formula. That's the sum of n terms of a geometric sequence. That is the that you're going to stick right here. But we're going to need to fit two things in this box, just like the one above. So S sub n is G1, 1 minus r to the n, 1 minus r. Please give yourself a little space in there because we're going to have to talk about the next weird case. Okay? All right. Now. We feeling all right? We good to go? Impossible? Hitting life? We good? Cool. All 
All right, now. Let's talk about what happens if I have an infinite sequence. Or rather, an infinite series. I'm adding up an infinite number of terms. Okay? So let me ask you this. If I go back to the one I had before, oh, let's go with the series, not a sequence. that add up to if I just keep on adding? It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And finally, I can just say, you know what? This thing doesn't add up to a, a single number. It adds up to infinity. Okay. Now remember, infinity is not a number. It's a destination. So in effect, this thing does not add up to any one number. And in this situation, when we're dealing with bigger, what we call a divergent sequence. not con divergent is con something converges then it gets to a single value okay so for example you can imagine that bees in a hive all converge on the hive okay that's where they all land all right that's the place the point all right what if okay so if my terms get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger it diverges but what if they stay the same if i had What happens to this guy? 10 plus 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 10. What does it ultimately go to? Powers that would be a multiple. Still, it's just getting bigger. 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 Right? Take a number. can't stay the same and add an infinite number of things, even if they're really small, because eventually <laughs> still going to add up to a very, very, very large number. Right? If I do 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1, if I just keep throwing dimes at you all day long, eventually you will become a millionaire. It might take a while, but still, it's going to happen. Okay? You see what I mean? Dimes at you for a couple of days would probably begin to hurt. Now, <laughs> okay, so in the upper, in the very top one, what was my R? Hmm? Two. Okay, cool. Well, what about r equaling zero? R equal that would be kind of a boring sequence, right? It would be a sequence of one term times zero. Done. <laughs> Ten plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero. Guess what? You do that a million times. Guess what? Still ten. So does that converge or diverge? It converges. Okay. So all of a sudden, we now have something that converges. It's boring. But it converges. Okay? It's really. We were divergent, and you can imagine if I had r equaling 50, every term getting bigger by 50, would that converge or diverge? That would diverge. So we know that. 2 and above is definitely divergent, right? We know that 1 is, oh, strike that, 1 or above is definitely divergent. And 0 converges. So wait a second, what about a half? Ooh. That's interesting. Think about that. Excuse me. 
point six two five. Smaller, smaller, and smaller, and smaller, and smaller. Wait a second. Does it converge? Well, let's think about it. You know what? Let's go back to, let's just say, a couple of years ago, like uh, ancient Greece. Okay. And there was this guy named Zeno and Zeno's Paradox. Have you ever heard of Zeno's Paradox? Okay. You might have heard about it in TOK. Zeno's Paradox, there's different variations of Zeno's Paradox, and there are several of Zeno's Paradoxes. He came up with a couple. But let's imagine this. I am standing roughly 10 feet away from that. Take half of the distance. Okay. In one step, I've traveled five feet. Painfully, but I've stepped five feet. Now, the next step, I'm going to take two and a half feet. And I'm going to cut the distance in half again. And then half again. And then half again. And then half again. And half again. First of all, am I... No. Okay, now Zeno's... variations of Zeno's paradox. There is a guy standing next to a tree. But we when shooting is that yes, the arrow in there we your little logic puzzle and I leave that to Dr. Uh, sorry to uh, to uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, okay. So but if I were to do this experiment that I just mentioned where I go five feet and then two and a half feet and then one and a half feet after that and one one point two five and so on and so on and so on and so on. If I take an infinite number of steps, how far did I travel altogether? How, much, how far away was I in the beginning? I was 10 feet, right? So if I take an infinite number of steps, I will eventually land on a single number. And you can imagine we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. And we've all done this with our calculators from time to time, right? Here's a fun way to play around with your calculator. All right, so 10. All right, now we're going to take our, uh, we can do our answer. We can do, let's do this. Um, divided by two. That's our first step was five feet, right? I traveled five feet. And the second step, I did two and a half feet. So I've traveled seven and a half feet. Okay. No, that's not going to fly. Uh, let's do this. There they are. And eventually, as you can see, we're getting really, 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 really small. After 30 steps, I'm going 9.3 times 10 to the negative ninth feet. Very small. Okay. All right. We, I mean, we're talking on the order of bacteria there. Okay. So the question is, does this add up to a complete number? And the answer is yes. Get out of here. And there they are. 
and you can see that we are converging and after a while even though it really is you know these five leading nines and then a five two three the calculator just says eh, whatever man it's ten <laughs> okay what's that This is, this is me taking steps towards the wall. Are, are we cool? Okay, good. All right, so now, the question was, in that case, my R value was what? What was I multiplying each term by? One half. So if R is equal to one half, it converges. What do you think if I divide by like a third? Multiply it by a third each time. The thing would still converge? Okay. How about this? Take that high bounce ball example that I talked about on the first day. Take the bounce ball and we say our, our, my high bounce ball is going to bounce 99% of the original height. That's a pretty darn good bounce ball. Okay. So if I drop it from 10 feet, it's going to bounce up 9.9 .9 feet. And then it's going to bounce and come up 99% of that, and then 99% of that. Will it eventually convert? Eventually reach. So 99.99 is. have to be able to say to ourselves is that for a geometric sequence to converge, it has to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, great. So, but now somebody could be saying, well, wait a minute, hold on. What if it was negative? Wait a minute. What the heck does that do? <laughs> Hold on. Plus ten, minus five, plus two and a half, minus one point seven. Does it convert? Yes, it does converge. So, even if it's negative and it's getting smaller, it will still work. So, in effect, oh, dang, whoops, sorry. That's why I was having problems, because it wasn't right the first time. Yeah, I know. Give me a break. Um, so we can go back here and change this to what? Instead of just R less than 1, what can I say? Make that to include the negatives now. Because we knew that negative 1 half worked. What about negative 0.999? Would that still converge? Point, what, it would just flip signs each time, but it would, it might, it would, sl it would converge slower. But it would converge. So how can I change this R less than 1 to make it reflect the negatives? Less than 
one. We good? All right. So now, if we know that have r less than one. Let's think about this for a second. Let's go back to this formula that we just came up with. And then we're going we're gonna to write our last formula, and then we're going to do some problems in Broncos. This episode of the art show will be finished. All right, now let's take this for example for, exa for a moment. Take a look at that. Now, let's say r is a half, just for our argument's sake. If r is a half, if I do one half, look right here. One half to the one hundredth. Think of that. One half times itself a hundred times. How big is that? Ridiculously small, right? Crazy small. And if I put it to the millionth, even more ridiculously small. What happens if I take it to the infinite? One, a small number, less than one, tiny number, times itself gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And finally, eventually, what happens when I do an infinite number of steps? What happens to it? You good? All right. If I take this thing, this negative r to the n, or minus r to the n, and we're an infinite. And that's your form. So if we have an infinite sum, first of all, it will only work if r is between negative 1 and 1. But if it is, and we have an infinite number of them, this is what we have. This is our formula. It's a nice formula. It's very simple. And that's the other one you're going to put in, in that space. Do we see that? Are you cold? Those are all your formulas for arithmetic and geometric. Congratulations. Class dismissed. Everyone have a great day. No, actually, this episode of the Ronco Show has been brought to you by arithmetic and geometric sequences and series. And the number two.